Once again, I've grown my peas in a gutter, plastic gutter that I've been using these past, what, four years now. And the type of pea that I'm growing this year is called Sugar Ann. It's a sugar snap pea, so you can eat the entire pod and the peas inside. They are supposed to be very tasty. I've never grown them before, but I'm going to put them in this bed at the top. And this wasn't originally the place I was gonna put them, but things change. It's been very busy. I've been away. I've been having to socially isolate. I'll get to that in a bit. And the other bed is just not ready. And this bed is, it's ready to go for seedlings and plants. And I need to get these peas in the ground. They're a good few inches tall now, looking for something to climb up. And if I'm going to get a decent crop early on, I need to get these in the ground. I've watered them. And the principle now is that you jiggle them out and it slides into this area that I've just created with my hoe. It's supposed to be easy, it mainly is, Although, being that I'm filming right now, it's probably going to not work just because of Murphy's Law and all of that. So let's see if we can get these peas in the ground. Oh yes, I can feel it moving. Growing peas in a gutter is a really smart way of starting them off. At least part of them is going. Here we go. Oh yes. You guys slide down too. Woo! <laughs> it keeps the it keeps the peas from being scoffed by rodents. It keeps the small plants from being eaten and devoured practically by slugs and snails. And as you can see, they come out pretty easily. Very little disturbance. These guys will come down now too. It's a really, really simple way to start them off. And then once I have them here in the bed, I just move the compost around them, settle them in, put some sticks in for them to start climbing up. And I'm going to also protect them with some netting because the pheasants are on the prowl. I've heard about some damage yesterday on someone else's plot. Now this I'm going to save and I'll be using this again, maybe later in the summer or definitely next year. So these guys are in, yes. A lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to keep the allotment now that we've moved house. The answer is yes. How could I give up this beautiful space? But it is going to be hard work trying to at least this year juggle them both because there is so much work that needs doing at the new house. And so I'm going to take you back to the house with me and chat about some of the things that are going on right now, some of the things I've started with in the garden and let you know what my plans are. Before we head back to the house though, I want to show you one of my latest perennial vegetables and it is flowering. This is the nine star broccoli and you can see loads of florets over there. That plant has already been picked and loads more forming. And there's a large central head there. It looks like a cauliflower, but the flavor is something kind of in between. I would say purple sprouting broccoli and cauliflower. And as long as you keep picking those florets, the plant will survive. And I think it can survive up to eight or nine years, but it tends to kind of peter out about five years. And I'm not sure if that's because people forget to pick the florets and it just goes to seed or what. 
but I'm extremely excited about this perennial because it's low work, it's low maintenance, and I mention quite a few others in chapter one of my book, A Woman's Garden, Grow Beautiful Plants and Make Useful Things. I grow lots of plants that don't need as much in the way of spring sowing, including this one. This is Taunton Dean Kale. There's also another thing that I want to show you before we leave. My goodness, I could have probably stayed here all day and showed you all of the beautiful plants coming into flower. I love May, but probably the most stunning in my garden is this one, the blue Himalayan poppy. It is an absolute wonder. That blue color is real and it is so rare in the plant world. Just look at how stunning these guys are. This plant is a perennial and you can see a couple more buds coming up. And I bought a couple more last year and I will be planting them in the home garden. But in the meantime, I just want to savor this beautiful blue color. These are considered very difficult to grow, but they just love it here at the allotment. Well, you got a sneak peek of the greenhouse in last week's video, and that was my collaboration with Alexandra Campbell of the Middle Size Garden. Really great information in that video. You will definitely be taking notes if you are interested in designing a beautiful, practical garden. But we're now here at the home garden and I wanna give you a little bit of an update as to what's been going on here. We moved in on the 20th of April and it's been some weeks since then. The week after, so we moved into the house, boxes everywhere, just trying to settle in. The week after I had to take the ferry across to England and we adopted two new cats and uh, Comet, he looks just like Louis, and they are the same pedigree, the same breed, rather, um, Korats. And then little Portia, who we're calling little Chippy, she is also a Korat, but she's more of a, a rare color type, like Chibi's was. She's called a, a lilac point. And they're settling in, they're doing so much better than the first couple of days when they were absolutely terrified. So we have three cats now. Maggie is happily running around outside and the other two will be able to come outside as well. And not just yet, but in the next couple of weeks or so. But because I went to England, I had to self-isolate. And originally it was supposed to be for two weeks alone here at the house. Josh couldn't even be here. Uh, so I spent a lot of time cleaning and I, I clean because it needs doing. This place was a disaster when we arrived and also it, it helps to steady my, my mind and my nerves as well. It's something that I do to calm down and the greenhouse was the obvious first place to start. I've just taken all of the plants out of the new old greenhouse and I want you to see all the stuff that's left over. I'm gonna clean it all up today, get it nice and tidy because there's nothing like a good clean greenhouse for plant health and also as inspiration to get sewing and I'm a little bit behind with the move. We've been here for just over a week. You can see that Maggie is exploring She's been howling to go out. Now oh, she found the leftover bits of my spider plant. No, nope, bad girl. Spider plant actually has a mild kind of hallucinogen <laughs> for cats. And Louie loved killing my spider plant. And look, Maggie too. Hey, you stay away. When we got to the house, 
the greenhouse had probably not been used in years. The extension on the house is put in five years ago, so we estimate maybe between three and five years, somewhere in there. And there was a lot of rubbish inside. The glass was caked in dirt and grime and the floor as well. There were all kinds of different uh, chemical toxins in there as well. So bottles that had been sitting out in the sun and I'm not completely sure exactly what's in some of them. There was also a lot of rodent bait and broken glass. Oh my goodness, that's something that I'm gonna have to deal with, th I think throughout the entire property is broken glass and we have picked up so much right now, but it's in the lawn as well. But we've got it to a state, or I got it to a state during my self-isolation where the greenhouse is sparkling. It is obviously going to be the center of the garden right now because I'm starting a lot of seedlings and there are tons in there a lot of them destined for the allotment garden because there's not going to be as much in the way of beds this year in the home garden. Now inside the greenhouse I have plenty growing here too. We'll start over here. These are my extra Mechanopsis, so these are the blue Himalayan poppies. So you can see how small they are and this is actually their second year. They were much smaller before when I originally got them and I definitely want to start a large patch of blue poppies here at the house and these guys are going to start that off. Loads of dahlias here. I've got, these are the Egyptian walking onions for the home garden. Quite a few tomatoes. There are I think two varieties, there's San Marzano, and I can't remember what variety this is. Oh yes, Ailsa Craig, which is a pretty standard one. And that'll be all here in the greenhouse. These are Mashua, they kind of look like nasturtiums, and they are related. And this is a new vegetable for me this year. A friend gave me a few tubers, so we'll see how they do. They're a climber, apparently. And then back here I have the perennial leeks and they are putting on some good height and these will go out into the allotments. Quite a few other little plants in here. I've had to move the catnip in because the neighborhood cats, so not just Maggie, they've been decimating this. So that's all that's left of the original growth. And then I've run out of space. So quite a few things are on the grounds, including a lot of the dahlias and then over here on this staging, I have some spinach and salad leaves down here in these fabric bags. And then quite a few seeds are potted up or sown here. We've got some beans and more beans in the back. These are calendula. I've got quite a few different brassicas in here and they've only been sown some of these for a couple of days, so no signs of life there, but there will be soon. These guys have been in this module for far too long, so I need to plant these guys out. These are some kohlrabi and beetroot and perpetual spinach and lettuce. And I also need to pot on my celery. And this is a type that's self-blanching. It's called golden self-blanching. So hopefully I'll have a bit better luck with those this year. All of these plants in the back, these are all different types of cone flowers. So we've got bee balm in here and also quite a, quite a few echinacea. And these are the Cape gooseberries that I propagated the end of last year from the parent plant and they are getting quite big as well. The next thing that I spent a long time cleaning out is the shed. And I had told you in my original video showing you around the place that I wanted to get rid of it. And so many of you said, keep it, keep it, you've got to salvage it. I'm talking like a lot of comments, so many that it swayed my mind. And I originally wanted to get a brand new shed, 
a little bit of a treat and something that I can have as a potting shed and storage and whatnot. But it made me realize that a lot of people are going to end up with an allotment that has an old ramshackle shed anyway. So this could be a really good exercise in showing what you could do to make the best out of a shed that you might find on a plot. And wood in general is very expensive at the moment anyway. So being able to salvage what you can and bring it back to life will be a really, I think, important lesson. And also it could be quite fun as well. So I asked you in the community tab what color I should paint it in the end after I've done all the renovations to the wood and the inside. And I think every single color in the rainbow and then some were mentioned. So I think I will have to surprise you with the final color scheme. But I want to also go through what I'm going to do to, to basically replace the floor in there because it's rotten through. And also what I'm going to do to treat the wood to give it a little bit more life as well. I've just started cleaning out this shed taking quite a few things out of it, but I just want to show you the state it's in right now. I'm not sure that that wood there is going to be any good. The floor is completely rotten. In fact, I just stepped through the floorboards right there. I'm fine. My ankle is fine. It's okay. But I think that the floor is the first thing that needs to be pulled up and replaced. I have lots of junk to go through. There are some things in here that are salvageable, like the screws there. I'll use that, that to help rebuild the shed. But a lot of this has just been in here for years, years and years and years. There are a couple cool things though. It looks like a some kind of a military award from 1935, it says. 1939. So... I guess World War II. Interesting. And this old oiler reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. I am definitely keeping this. Everything will get oiled with this from here on out. And uh, that cool fork. Yes, I want to show that to you. It's like an old fashioned garden fork. And look at the fitting. So you've got your iron bit here, and then it comes up on one side and the other of the wooden shaft so that over time you could replace the shaft. That's so cool. And it really does come from an era where tools were made to last a long time and to be reused. Very cool. So essentially I will be remodeling the shed but it needs some foundations first and a lot of TLC. The cleaning and tidying does not stop with the shed and the greenhouse. I have been power washing surfaces, have barely made a dent in it, I do have to say. I power washed part of the side of the house. I have also been going around the property just trying to find bits of rubbish and collect it all in one in one place and I am just shocked by the amount of stuff that I have been pulling out of the hedges from around the back of the shed just left out in the open again lots of broken glass lots of little bits of plastic and I have a feeling that there's a lot more waiting for us as we start uncovering some of the overgrown areas around the house as well but I think that I got the, mo the majority of it and it's all laid out we're going to take it to the recycle center slash incinerator and just get rid of probably 99% of it. There are a few pots and a few useful items that I might keep that are in good nick, but unfortunately anything that's plastic and you it's left out in the sunlight, that UV light will just destroy it over time and it just becomes brittle and breaks and just contributes to even more plastic, microplastic ending up in the garden. So there's a big load of crap basically behind the house at the moment that's going to be gone very soon. And 
I also have all of my container plants just sat out here in the grass alongside the greenhouse and have just been watering them and, and keeping on top of that and deciding where they're gonna go. And I'll be doing a lot more container gardening around the house here this summer and also focusing on the allotments. And things are really gonna start get, uh, getting going in the main garden here, I would say in September, October time, later this year. I wanna have a chance to look and see what I wanna do, plan things out, watch how the lights and the rainfall kind of interact with the land. And there's time, there's time for that. I do have an update on the container potatoes though that I'd like to share with you. This concludes my experiment on growing potatoes in containers. So I planted one of them, the one on the left quite deep, so right towards the bottom, which is only about, I guess, about a foot, 12 inches deep. And then the one on the right, I planted shallowly and have earthed up once. And you can see that it grew right up and lots of leaves here at the top. This is a determinate type of potato, so it will only grow potatoes in one area, so likely down here. But earthing it up protects the foliage from early spring frosts, and it just gives more mass to hold water and supports the plant overall. And if you did decide to grow determinate or indeterminate potatoes, so um, Desiree is one that I'm growing this year. They will continue to grow potatoes all the way up through the container. So that's an added benefit to earthing up. I dug up this potato. I didn't see any signs of, of foliage or any kind of signs of life. I dug it up and it's actually squishy. It must have sent up shoots and they've since rotted away. They never reached the surface. So it was planted too deep. I think that May is definitely my favorite month of the year. You can just practically scoop the life out of the air. It's just filled with bird song and smells and everything is just so lush and green and growing and really pleased that we finally made it to May because I feel that my garden is at least two to three weeks behind what it normally is. And actually a lot of people have been saying the same thing. We've had unseasonably cold weather here on the island and I know that other people around the world have said the same as well. So frosts and wind and snow and just weather and cold that we're not used to dealing with this far into spring, but things are picking up. And if there's any month that will help you get ahead in the garden, it's May. And every day in May is a chance to get on top of all of your gardening tasks because the warmth and the mild weather that you tend to get in May really does encourage seeds to germinate quicker and for young plants to fill out faster. And this is definitely the month to get going. And I'm definitely spending time catching up here in the greenhouse and at the allotments. Other things that are happening here on the Isle of Man are several events coming up that I, I will be at, including the annual seed swap and plant share, which is on the 22nd of May. And I'm hosting that as Lovely Greens and author with the Laxi allotment. And it's a free event. People can bring their extra seedlings and extra plants and extra seeds and then take home the ones that they want. And it's very easy, totally free. We fund it through a raffle to basically pay for the venue and a bit of extra to go to the allotment. And I'll be giving away a couple of books in the raffle as well. So signed copies of my, my new book. And I'll be sat there signing copies as well and and talking to anyone who wants to chat to me about the book or anything about gardening and, and allotments, etc. So lots of fun things on the agenda. Looking forward to it. And if you are on the island, definitely stop by. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.
One last thing before you go. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.